side along with Corey Macklin, and we've got another one from the USWA today. We've got another one indeed. Got some newcomers in the USWA. The open door policy has brought Nurse Cratchit. She's got a newcomer, Psycho. We'll see him. Uh, he's here today scheduled. Dr. Tom Pritchard to be on the card today. Lauren Davenport's got a new man of the 90s. Yeah, that's understand. what I hear. Yeah, we hadn't seen him, hadn't heard much about him. We'll find that out. Richard Lee and the Moondogs is scheduled today. We've got a big lineup on championship wrestling. We got the new man of the 90s, and uh, Tony Falk also scheduled to be here. I guess he's no longer going to be considered man of the 90s. We'll, we'll sort all that out a little bit later on. Back in just a moment with action. Right now, along with the referee Frank Morrell, here comes Nurse Cratchit, uh, bedpan in hand, and that—that that is Psycho. Our first look at him here in the USWA. Interesting-looking individual, big, stocky-looking yeah. individual. Who? Uh, Hope he doesn't come over here by us. Uh, yeah, his head in the ring is a good idea. Nurse Cratchit uh, up on the ring apron with him, and Frank Morrell, the referee, says he's in the ring. Go ahead and ring the bell. The bell sounds. And Psycho, well, he turns to Chris Frazier and goes after him. Here is uh, here's Nurse Cratchit headed this way. Maybe it, uh, a little explanation about what happened to Dr. Death, maybe. Dave Brown, let me tell you something. You and all these people, let me put your mind at ease. Dr. Death is no longer with me because he is scared of the execution of the I want to put on here. And I thought to myself, well, what can I do to prove to these people that we're bad? Well, I went back to the Louisiana State Mental Hospital and got the best patient I ever took care of. And here he is today. And he's going to eliminate every opponent every time I tell him to. Well, there's the word from Nurse Cratchit. Dr. Death is, uh, is not around anymore. He was not satisfied with, uh, what did you, executions? Yeah. Oh, boy. She's well. got this psycho, boy. He is... I'm kind of character in here. He's been, uh, from what I've been able to watch during the interview there, he's been controlling. Is that pretty well uh, what's been going on? Yeah. And what I see here in a big clothesline on Chris Frazier there. Psycho! I first look at him in the USWA. Got Frazier over on the bottom rope choking him there. Uh, the nurse Cratchit getting yeah. the ball too. She's choking Frazier on the rope and hit him with a, uh, with a, a fist while he's over there. Psycho takes Chris Frazier, whips him to the other side of the ring in the turnbuckle and falls in on him. Boy, Frazier just collapsed right in the ring there after he drove into him in the uh, turnbuckle, choking him again. This psycho is going after Chris Frazier. Now choking Frazier. Holds him up now, setting him up for something. Mm -hmm. Right across the back, he caught him. Well, Dave Nurse Cratchit's got her new one in the USWA, and Psycho said Dr. Death. You know, I, from what I've seen so far, this guy is worse than Dr. Death. Yeah, he's a tough one. Don't know if he's that much of a wrestler, though, from looking at him there. Yeah, well, that's that's a good point. He's, he's used the choke hole and pulling hair, and now he's biting Chris Frazier with some reach. I think this guy is psycho. Not many wrestling moves at all from psycho, but he is just strictly going after Chris Frazier. Down choking Frazier. Sets Frazier up now. Oh, slam on Chris Frazier. Pin cover. Two, three. He got it. He got it. Psycho gets the win. With Nurse Cratchit at the ringside, there he is, Psycho. I first look at him in the USWA, and uh, he's some kind of awesome today. Nurse Cratchit in there to collect her star patient, she said, from the place she worked in Louisiana. Psycho with a victory here today, and there they go. She collects that bedpan and out of here. They'll be on their way. A victory for Psycho, and Chris Frazier slowly making his way out of the ring. Situation developed this past week in which the Moon Dogs were going against uh, Lawler, Jarrett, and uh, Eric Embry, and I would say that that war has reached a new plateau, especially with what they did to Eric Embry involving his eyes. Take a look.
it's a Palisade. We're on the way. Oh, it's Aaron and Embry against the Bulldogs originally. Oh, it's Pat Lee for that big play. Embry going after Moondog Spike over here. Slams Cujo into the turnbuckle. One ball and 60 minutes in time. It's underway. Wild action, the Moondogs at Richard Lee. He has Laura, Jared, and Embry. You see Embry with that trash can. There's Moondog Cujo right to the head with it. Eric Embry in the ring. Wrapping that chain around his fist and comes down on Moondog's body. Laura goes out and nails Moondog Cujo. Or the boot that a fan gave him. And the king going to work on Moondog Cujo. Emory grabs that trash can and nails Moondog Spike with it again. Look at Eric Emory. Got that trash can over the head of the Moondog and takes a big play and slams that play with it. Waller's working Moondog Cujo over. Jeff comes back behind the moon dog and he's holding his moon dog spike. Holding him and Embry comes up with another chain. Out of nowhere. Boy, Embry is rolling tonight. Eric Embry pulled the chain out and rolled it up on the moon dog. Jeff comes in with a trash can. Slams it on the dog. Jeff's holding that can. Well, action is still going on, even though all our Jared and Emory got pin cover. Here comes a move. What in the world has he got in there? He's got some kind of stuff. That thing is steaming. What is it? Some kind of hot liquid, Jeff. He threw it in Emory's eyes over there. I don't know what it was in that thing. A cup full of some kind of stuff. Moondog spot. The other Moondog came in here with that jock and threw it right in Embry's eyes and caught Embry with it. Oh, what in the world was it? The stuff was steaming. I don't know what it was. He caught Eric Embry right in the eyes with it. Some of the fans have got some cups of ice at ringside trying to cool Embry off. Need some medical help for Eric. Because that stuff got right in his eyes in there. That's going to be something else. Laura and Jared are still over, and the fans are handing their cups over to try to cool Embry off from that hot liquid. I don't know what it was. It was some kind of red junk that Moondog Spot came in there with. He had a glove on the hand that he was holding it with because the stuff looked to be really smoking there and steaming. Lawler's running after Embry. He's got a, it's like a paper towel. Embry's screaming and yelling. He can't see anything. Boy, that's got to be a bad feeling, I tell you. He caught Embry right in the face with that. Well, Eddie, I know you're hearing the same things I am. Why not just get rid of the moon dogs? Quit booking them. Well, you're right, Dave. Uh, they say every card, letter, and phone call represents about 250 people. And every one you get, they say, get rid of the Moondogs, get rid of the Moondogs. Well, there's two reasons why I haven't got rid of the Moondogs. Number one, it would leave myself and the company open to a lawsuit. Because with Moondog, two of them got hurt and had to go to the hospital, and we didn't do anything about it. So if it was to fire them now, it'd be a lawsuit. And number two, you know, Dave, I hung my ego up years ago when I hung up my boots and my tights. But these guys here certainly have an ego, and they're well to have. 
And if I was to fire the moon dogs today, next week they would be on some other TV station, some other racing program, and they would get out there and say, well, the USWA fired us because their wrestlers were cowards, they were scared to wrestle us, and they would get on there, namely Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett, they'd run them down. So I can't let that happen, and I know these guys, their ego, they won't let it happen. So therefore, the Moondogs are here, I'll book them, and I'll try to make their life as miserable as I can make it as long as they're here. I understand, I, and I uh, appreciate the explanation. I hadn't thought about a couple of those things. Uh, Jerry? Well, you know, uh, w what Eddie's saying is just, is just a little, uh, uh, it's just sort of symbolic of how times have changed. I remember a few years back, there was a similar situation with a guy by the name of Terry Funk in here. And, uh, you know, uh, he, was, he was just running roughshod over everything, and people said, well, why not suspend him? And as a matter of fact, Eddie did suspend Terry Funk, and the very next day, if Eddie remembers right, I mean, you know, he gets telegrams and phone calls from Terry Funk's attorney and saying that, uh, you know, basically saying, threatened with over a million dollar lawsuit for depriving the guy of a, the right to make a living, is basically what he was trying to say. And uh, Richard Lee has threatened the same thing. You know, he told Eddie Marlin that, uh, yeah, you guys try to get rid of us and we'll slap you with the biggest lawsuit that you've ever seen. And, and a lawsuit like that could, as Eddie said, I mean, you know, it could put a company probably right out of business in these days and times. But what I want to appreciate and what I want to thank Eddie Marlin for is what he's saying is he's going to give us the chance to save a little face with these guys because, like he said, if he did fire them or stop booking them, they're going to be running all around the country talking to everybody they can saying, well, you know what happened? Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Lawler were not tough enough to run us out of town. The only way they were able to get rid of us was to fire us. And like he said, we don't want them to say that because that is not true. We will get rid of the moon dogs once and for all, and you're looking at the two guys that will eventually get the job done. Now, it may be taking us a little longer than we hope, but we will get rid of the moon dogs. And like Eddie said, we've hospitalized two of them on two different occasions, and Richard Lee keeps coming up with more. Well, Richard Lee, you better have you a real long list of moon dogs because before this gets over with, well, after the stuff you guys are trying now with what they pulled with Eric Embry, I promise you, the fun and games are over. We're going to get real serious now, and we will get rid of the moon dogs. And you know, just, to, just, 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 I just want to say something real short here. You know, uh, I was just sitting here listening, and uh, if this situation maybe took place in California or some other place, it might be just a little different. But as Eddie said, you're looking at two guys, and yeah, we might, we're not ashamed to say it. we do got a little bit of an ego, and we got a real big ego right here at home because these are the great fans that come out and support us every week, and we're not going to let them down. Because the moon dogs, yeah, y'all are coming into our backyard, and we're going to do, we're, like Lawler said, it took, it's maybe taking us a little bit longer, but one way or the other, we're going to run you guys out of town. It's come down to that. Either me and Lawler are going to stay, or you two guys are going to get out of town. All right, Jeff, Jerry, Eddie, thank you very much. And uh, there's the explanation, so stay tuned, fans. We'll be back with more after this. But Richard Lee has just arrived. Richard, I don't know you're, what you, you are not supposed to That's be right. here. I don't care. Ask me if I care. Dave Brown, I'm a happy man today, and I'm going to tell you why. I sit back in the back and I listen to Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett, Eddie Marlin. Everybody wanted to come out here and cry the blues. But I'm a happy, happy man today, and let me tell you why. If John Gotti, Leona Helmsley, Jim Baker, Mike Tyson, if they all had my attorney brother, they'd be free people today, walking the streets, enjoying the pretty day outside. Well, let me tell you something, boys. Dave Brown, I might even fire you, since you and Corey sit out here week after week after week, biased commentators, and it's just like your weather reports, you're usually wrong 95% of the time about what you see in the ring. And I'm just, I'm a happy man today. And I just, I wish that Eddie Marlin, I, I wish that Jerry Lawler, I wish that Jeff Jerry, I wish this company would try to suspend us 
because I'll own this company before it's all over with. Well, you already heard him say he's not going to ban you for that very reason. He doesn't want to give you the opportunity to bring the attorney into it. I tell you what, I'm going to make you even happier today, but it's all right. I'm going to give you the rest of the day off. We got a match right here. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you very much. And let's uh, go to the ring. Right? Is that all right? All right. Very good. Richard Lee right there. Boy, I tell you what, you sometimes you just have to kind of smile and say nothing when that guy is around. Yeah. Tony Falk going against Don Kelly. Tony no longer with Lauren Davenport in his corner. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That $1,000 bonus is going for Falk, but hey, he is... Really going after Don Kelly here today. Tony Falk. Yeah, I guess we can say the X-Man of the 90s. <laughs> Falk going after Kelly. Pin cover. Oh, he picks him up. See, that kind of stuff. When you got the man and got him pinned, why not go get the one, two, three? And... Tony just nailed him. Looked like he got him right in the throat, maybe with a thumb. Looked like he jabbed him with something there. Hey, Tony Falk wrestling like a wild man here today. He must be upset about that situation. He's on a rampage going after Don Kelly. Sets Kelly up now and uh, whips him into the ropes. Heads him with an elbow and takes Don Kelly down. Oh, Tony Fall. Go for the... They picked him up again. Look at him. Well, you hit him with a fist right in the face. Yeah, Boy, yeah. Tony's he's gone nuts here today. <laughs> I think you're exactly right about that. He is going after Don Kelly, some kind of tough. I think it may be too late for Mr. Falk, though. The $1,000 bonus has gone out the window for Tony Falk. That's what had him going previously, but oh, he got a two count again on Kelly. How many times is that? Three or four that he That's probably had the three time, count yeah. and uh, just picked him up instead. There he goes again. Uh, yeah. Well, that kind of stuff. Now, Falk had him pinned there. Got a two count every time. He could have won on and got the three count on Kelly. Don Kelly hasn't hardly had an opportunity to stand on his feet in this match because Tony Falk has been going after him left and right after right. Takes Kelly, whips him into the ropes again, and knee right in the midsection of Don Kelly. Follows down on him. Another pin cover. Well, picks him up and hits him with a fist again and again and again. Tony Falk and Don Kelly, one fall, 15 minutes in time. And uh, Tony Falk is just taking his time, too. I guess he's going to try to take the entire 15 minutes of this match. Working Don Kelly. Here's promoter Eddie Marlin out. I don't know what Eddie, Eddie was telling him over there. Oh, he told Frank uh, Frank Morell something about uh, the count. Yeah, I noticed that. Go ahead and count him out, I guess, next time. Ball drops down with a knee. He's got the pin. That, oh, he, that, yeah. uh, he tried to pick him up again. Well, that's Frank got a quick count. I mean, Tony's had him beat for three, four minutes here. Oh, just keeps working over him. So good. finally, Frank got the three count to fall. And uh, that's going to be it. It's going to be a victory for Tony Falk. He gets it. One, two, three. Not that he wanted it, but he got it. Tony? Let me tell you something. Lauren, I love you with all of my heart. You have broken my heart. You told me I'm not good enough to be your man of the 90s. You went out. You got some bum. Now you're calling him the man of the 90s. But let me tell you, I don't want to hurt you. I love you. But let me tell you something, man of the 90s. When Tony Falk gets in that ring with you, he's going to rip you apart piece by piece. And then, Lauren, you will know that I can handle myself. Tony, well, uh, maybe that's what part of that was about. She had been upset that, uh, that he wouldn't... Uh, he, he, he wouldn't, you know, hurt the yeah. opponent enough. So maybe that's what he's trying to prove right there. Uh, uh, Tony Falk, a very... I don't know. It's a strange situation with Tony there, but he says uh, he's going to go after the man of the 90s himself. Hey, speaking of, uh, of uh, other people going after others, I don't know too much about this. Moondog Hunter is all I know about, and since we didn't know much about him, Eddie Marlin sent the USWA camera to kind of check him out. Here's Moondog Hunter. Hi, good folks. 
Name's old Charlie Trapper. Now, this Marlin feller, this wrestling feller, he called me all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Told me he'd heard about me. Told me how he'd heard that I was out here in these Ozarks. And I've been a doing some fighting and some tracking and trapping. Mound all my life. And man, the beast, there ain't nothing ever whipped me. Well, I was proud of that fact. That Marlin fella, he heard that all the way down there in Memphis, Tennessee. And he's wanting me to come down there and do some of this here wrestling. I don't know nothing about a bunch of wrestling. But I tell you, I've been all over these seven counties here in the Ozarks. All up and down this water. And ain't nobody ever whipped me. Every now and then I venture into town on a Saturday night. And I do what I got to do. But these here moon dogs y'all got out there. Oh, Marlin fella, he tell me they're pretty bad people. Told me a little bit about everything I've been doing. But they ain't never seen the fact of a Charlie Trapper on the trail. Now, I tell you, I'm coming your way. And moon dogs, listen to what I got to say. Want to get there, look out. Charlie Trapper is on his way. As a matter of fact, I think I got the scent right now. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I got this here old hammer, old Betsy here, to knock some of them varmints in the head. Because I've been a trapping them wolves and them wild dogs, them killer dogs and things, next to all my life. I don't need this thing unless I need it for an equalizer. I got this old stick. Moon dogs, you take a good look at this old stick, buddy. I put that up under your throat. See just about how far I can shove you through the roof of anywhere we're at. But I don't use it unless I got to. They don't call me Charlie Trapper for nothing. And moon dogs, I'm a coming your way. Here we're gonna do the complete card for you. Just a few minutes first. A couple of guys who are going to be very much involved in the action coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum when everything kicks off at 7.30. Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Luller headed this way, greeting the fans along the way. And uh, you guys, uh, once again, have got uh, the Moon Dogs to look at. Yeah, Dave, just a few minutes ago we came out here and me and Jerry, we were a little low-keyed and, and we had a few things on our mind. And I had one thing on my mind and I started not to say anything about it, but then the more I thought about it, no, Richard Lee, I'm talking right to you. Now, Monday night, you had your little plan devised and, and you thought up and you think you're the most brilliant thing since Albert Einstein or something. And you came down with that acid or, or whatever you had in that cup. And you were coming for me. That's right, you had your moon dogs and, and you signaled them down there. And moon dog, I guess his name's Spot or whatever. And we thought we had him out of commission. No, but you were coming for me. You were coming to put my eyes out. And Richard Lee, when you talk about eyesight, that, sits a, that, that sort of hits a little soft spot in my family. Because I know, because when I was 14 years old, my father, he had a disease in his eye. And they didn't know if he was going to lose all, all uh, complete uh, uh, eyesight, complete vision. They didn't know what was going to happen. And it was a very emotional time between me and my father and my whole family because he didn't know if he'd ever get to see us again. Yeah, we get to be around one another, but he didn't know. So, Richard Lee, that's exactly what you were coming for. You were coming to take my eyes out. So, pal, like we said just a few minutes ago, it's time for, for either me and Lawler to get the heck out of town, and that ain't going to happen, or you two, and your moon dogs, or your three moon dogs, and all of y'all to get out of town. So, Monday night, that's when I'm going to do my ranting and raving. I'm not going to get out here and holler and scream today. But Monday night, we're going to be in a cage, and nobody can get in and nobody can get out. And Richard Lee, I'm coming to take an eye out, to break an arm, to break a leg, where well, you'll never want to see Jeff Jarrett's face again in your life. Well, let me do a little ranting and raving then. Let me do a little screaming and hollering then, Jeff. Because Richard Lee and your stinking moon dogs, I don't know if you can clean your ears out enough to listen up and hear what this gentleman just said. And I don't know if all you people over there just heard it, but the one magic word is cage match. You understand? Cage match. Now, everywhere we've gone, 
We fought all over the buildings, and every time we've almost had those moon dogs down, they run and they get a garbage can or they run and they get a big piece of board and they run out of the ring and they hide in the dress room. But there ain't gonna be no running this week because we got you all in a cage. You, Richard Lee, and both your moon dogs in a cage. Now, I don't know if you saw that little piece of tape just a few minutes ago or not, but that guy calls himself, his name's Charlie Trapper, but he's taken on the nickname, the Moon Dog Hunter, because that's all he's done all his life, is hunt and trap and yeah, kill. Animals so far, but like he said, there ain't never been anything that walked on four legs or walked on two legs that's been able to whip this guy. And he weighs nearly 400 pounds, and we have invited him to come on down and get in the cage and bring those sticks and bring that big hammer and whatever we are gonna bring all of us together against Richard Lee and the Moondogs and like Jeff said once we're all in a cage we're gonna see who are the toughest dogs because that's what it's gonna be a nice dog fight in a cage where it should be and Monday night Monday night just may be the night that we get rid of the Moondogs and Richard Lee once and for all so be there Darren and Lawler, they'll be going against the Moon Dogs, and they will have uh, the Moon Dog Hunter alongside them. The uh, well, the uh, main event Monday night is uh, coming up, and as they both have said, it is going to be in the cage. But let's start out with the beginning of the card. Cat Garrett is going to be in there in the opening match. He is going to be going against the Big Black Dog. Should be a good opening match Monday night. Remember, 7.30 is bell time at the Mid-South Coliseum. Then... Are you kidding me? The Easter Bunny is going to be wrestling Nurse Cratchit. <laughs> that's uh, that's the special added attraction, Easter Bunny against Nurse Cratchit, Monday night at the Coliseum. Man of the 90s. This will be the new man of the 90s that uh, Lauren Davenport has. It will not be Tony Falk. It will be her new man of the 90s. Against Falk, huh? Uh, going against Tony Falk, though. And uh, that is going to be the situation. Uh, you know, you can see him under the... Uh, what a weird-looking mask he's got there uh, in front of Lauren Davenport. So the new man of the 90s goes against Tony Falk Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Then... Dirty White Boy will be going against Psycho. And Psycho, we saw a little bit earlier, didn't look a thing like that picture, uh, but yeah. uh, we saw him a minute ago, and I tell you what, this guy could be trouble in the yeah. USWA. Nurse Cratchit will be in his corner. Dirty White Girl will be in the corner of the Dirty White Boy. Then we're going to have the USWA ladies title match. Dirty White Girl will be challenging Lauren Davenport. Lauren got the belt from uh, Ms. Texas and is now the champion, and the U.S. ladies' title will be on the line. The Southern title will be on the line, too. We'll talk more about this one a little bit later on. It's a chain-on-the-pole match. Brian Christopher going against Dr. Tom Pritchard. The Southern title will be at stake. Then, six-man cage match. I don't really have to say too much more about this one because uh, Jeff and Jerry have already told you about it. They're going to have uh, Charlie Trapper, the Moondog Hunter, will be their partner as they will be going against the Moondogs and Richard Lee. And this could be it as they come looking for the Moondogs and especially after what happened last week. It promises to be a great Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. The parking will be free. A little added bonus great. for you there. 7.30 is when it all begins, Monday night at the Coliseum. We hope you will be right along at ringside. We'll be back here at ringside in just a moment. Here, looking for the uh, Southern title. Dave, let me just make this real short and sweet. First of all, let me say that I understand what it's like when you're young and ambitious and you want to make a name for yourself in professional wrestling. You'll do anything it takes. But you see, Brian Christopher, you are a disgrace to not only professional wrestling, but the Southern Heavyweight Championship. You see, you're nothing more than a punk in professional wrestling, trying to make a name for yourself here in the Mid-South, here in the uh, USWA area. Now you take a look at the people who have won the Southern Heavyweight Championship, you could go all the way back to, to guys like Glenn Rossi, go, go, go back to guys like Jack Briscoe, Jackie Fargo, and yeah, even Jerry Lawler, who have all won the Southern Heavyweight Championship. And even though I may not have agreed with all these men, I may not have looked up to all of them, they all have one thing, Brian Christopher, one thing that you don't have. They had ability, and also they had a little class to them when they walked in the ring. 
For you, you're nothing but a punk who couldn't even lace my boots, man. And when you talk about somebody who can beat you for the Southern title, it's me. I'm the man right here. Now, let me say this. You beat handsome Jimmy Valiant. You won the Southern Heavyweight Championship using a chain. And last week, you tried to beat me by using a chain. You may have got a one, two, three. You may have walked out with a belt, but you used a chain, Brian Christopher. Well, this week, we got a chain on a pole, and we're going to see just how tough you are. We're going to see what kind of punk you really are. If you want to use a chain, you climb up the pole and use it. But I'm here to tell you, I can climb a pole, and I can use a chain, and I will beat you, Brian Christopher. Dr. Tom Pritchard, chain on the pole match coming up this week. Dr. Tom heads for the ring right now. He's got, uh, got a match scheduled against the Shadow. Referee Frank Morell is up there, and... Here we go, Tom Pritchard against the Shadow here with USWA action today. Dr. Pritchard trying to get set. And we are ready. The bell is sounded. Dr. Tom Pritchard and the Shadow. One ball, 15 minutes in time. Tangle it up with the Shadow. Backs him up against the ropes. Good clean break. Dr. Tom Pritchard wrestling in out of Houston, Texas. Nice takedown by uh, Tom there. You know, Tom had a good point. He was talking about Brian Christopher, and uh, he uh, he lost the Texas title to Brian Christopher with, uh, uh, well, it, it, it was not totally a pin one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Tom remembers that, and of course he's seen Brian Christopher, and he's wrestled him uh, since for uh, not only that uh, Texas title, but the Southern title, and that's what he was referring to about that chain. Christopher is been well equipped in his matches and uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard is ready for him to try to get that Southern heavyweight title away from Brian Christopher. Follows down with an elbow in the shadow. Oh, he takes the shadow. I thought he was going to go for that match there for a moment. Takes that boot right across the top of the head of the shadow. Rams him over against the turnbuckle. Dr. to Tom Pritchard, certainly a veteran wrestler, Dave, and since he's been in the USWA, has really come on to be a great wrestler. Oh. Shadow made a mistake. He raked Tom across the eyes, and now Tom is going after him. Whips the shadow into the ropes. Back drive that flips the shadow over. Left him down on his back. Grabs him over. He's got him in a good hole there. The shadow. He's trying to hold on there. Rich has got the knee in his back. Yeah, he's kind of got him surfboarded there. There's not much the shadow can do to get out of that one. That's a tough hole. Shadow comes in with those black gloves on his hand and an entire black outfit. He is dressed. Uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard is ready for him. He's working the shadow over. Lambs him into the turnbuckle. Pritchard. Oh, flips him over hard again. Right I got Brian Christopher. He's got some big logging chains as he jumps into the ring. Grabs Tom, and the shadow is helping him. Look at him. He's holding Tom here while, while Christopher is wrapping his feet up yeah, with what is, chains. What is Christopher doing in there? He's coming in with two big chains. Tom was talking about, uh, about a, a, a match coming up where it's going to be a chain on the pole. And, and look at this, Christopher comes in with these huge, big old rusty chain. He's wrapping it around his throat. Oh, he's got him locked up. Well, oh, look at this, Christopher. Shoves a referee down. Boy, I tell you Come what. On, Brian. Did you say something about a chain? Huh? Shove me a punk? Am I punk now? <laughs> chain, chain. Punk is a good word. It comes to mind. Tom was just about untied, had his hands untied. 
and Christopher jumps back in there to tie him up again. Here's Eddie Marlin climbing into the ring. Yeah, Eddie's gonna try to get by him. Yeah, he shoves him back and tells him, hey, leave him alone. Look at this, he goes back and puts a boot upside his head. Now Eddie finally picks Brian up and moves him out of the way. Oh! oh. Brian shoves Eddie Marlin! Christopher's got another chain in there. Brian's got a chain and he nails Eddie oh, Marlin with it. He caught Eddie Marlin with that chain. Richard almost loose from the chains. Now he's on his feet. Christopher working on Eddie Marlin. Now Tom Richard is able to get Christopher. Yeah, yeah. first of all, help Tom get a loose over there. Oh, that's Christopher came in with those two big chains and pulled a chain out of his pocket. It looked like he bust that him all and open over there. Oh, well, he to, sure did. Didn't they, Eddie? He hit him with that chain and he yeah, cut he, him open. He cut him, yeah, he cut him open. Boy, open. I tell you, this kid. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, so, it's just so disgusting. I mean, here's a kid who can wrestle, who's got some promise. Eddie? Dave, I just want to say one thing to Brian Christopher. You are a punk. I'm calling you a punk. And you made me lie to the people. I stood right here just a few minutes ago, said I hung my ego up. Well, punk, I didn't hang it all up because you're in a title match. I still got some ego. I'm going to be in the ring with you. I know I'm too old to wrestle. But I'm going to referee that match. Oh, yes, and I'm going to take an equal equalizer with me, punk. And I'm not going to have to climb a pole to get it. Just act like you're going to put one hand on me. And you'll see some of my ego. Eddie Marlin, upset and understandably, is going to be the referee, Tom Pritchard and, and uh, Brian Christopher, in that match. Eddie will be there. Said he'd have an equalizer with him, so uh, that's going to be the situation coming up. Let's take a break. We'll be back. We're waiting Lauren Davenport right here. Her new man of the 90s is scheduled in a match right here today, and uh, as they uh, head for the ring, we're going to provide just this interview time. What is this? She, here she is with, uh, oh, the ribbon that says USWA Ladies Champion. Yeah, I see uh, Lauren Davenport right here with, oh my goodness, the new man of the 90s. That's right, Dave Brown. There's not a man in this USWA, a real man that is, and that includes yourself. Or a woman either, for that matter. Look how long it took me to beat Miss Texas. She hightailed it out of here. She's gone. What about it? Well, I, I hear what you're saying, and uh, you come out here and insult everybody, including me, and I don't have to tell you, I don't have any respect for you, but I'm going to let you have your interview right here, so go ahead. You disgust me, Dave Brown. This time, I want you to know I got the real man here. He's going to get in here, and he's going to annihilate this guy, and I'll let you see him work. Okay. Lauren Davenport, not too many words today. Everything she had to say was an insult to everybody in the area, as a matter of fact. She is uh, sending her new man of the 90s in against Trey Keller. Referee Frank Morrell called for the bell. It has sounded. Oh, Laura Davenport now removing the mask from the man of the 90s. And can't get a look. Yeah, there he is right there. The new man of the 90s. Well, still don't know too much about him, but uh, she... Ooh. Uh, Lauren slapped him over there, and he yes. said, go get him. Well, he seemed to like it, too. I, I'm, I'm going to watch right here. Boy, he starts out with a vicious forearm there after a, 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 almost a knee lift. He brought that boot to a delicate area of his opponent to get started. Man of the 90s, Lauren Davenport's man of the 90s, going to work on Trey Keller, his opponent. Tony Falk uh, could not get the job done the way that uh, Laura Davenport wanted it done, so she uh, fired him. Yeah, got this new guy in here. Tony said he's going to be looking for the guy. We saw Tony earlier today, and he's a wild man. Oh, man of the 90s comes off the ropes with the big elbow on Trey Keller. Double forearm on Keller. You know, He's 
He's saying, hey, I'm, how about more? Yeah. Unlike Tony, you know, with Tony, she always had to say, go get him again, get him some more. Well, uh -uh, not with this guy. He keeps attacking Trey Keller. He likes to beat up on people himself. Oh, mm. neck breaker on Trey Keller. Boy, he snapped that neck around with that reverse neck breaker, and I don't know, Trey Keller is in trouble here, let me tell you. He is definitely in trouble. I'll tell you one thing, if he had a crook in his neck, it's certainly gone because the man of the 90s twisted that neck of Trey Keller. Whips him into the ropes now, and a backdrop on Keller. Yeah, the man of the 90s yelling over to Lauren Davenport. How about a little more? Of course, she says, yeah, get it. Uh, he's slowly picking Trey Keller up by the hair. Wraps up that arm. Keller trying to reach for the ropes. That'll, that'll call for a break. He can't reach the ropes, however. This man of the night, he's able to keep him away from it. This guy's tough. He is. He is tough, Dave. He's going to work on Trey Keller. Working over that arm of Keller. Takes him down to the mat now. Lauren Davenport's got to put her two cents in the thing. Oh, he other than screaming at Keller. Man of the 90s, Lauren Davenport's new man in the USWA said she had to go and find her someone because uh, no one here to do the test, she said. Oh, goodness. He wrapped that arm around his leg and then dropped back. Boy, he could have broken that arm. There he goes again, wraps it around a white. Snap back and pop that arm as he goes. Lauren Davenport is loving it. She is really enjoying watching this man of the 90s work. Boy, got that leg again and falls right down on it. That's got to be paid for Trey Keller. He's not going for the pin at all. He's just going to hurt Trey Keller as he continues to work on it. And the ladies' champion, Lauren Davenport, is encouraging him in every way. She's outside of the ring screaming and yelling at our man of the nine days as he catches Trey Keller with a big knee lift. A powerful knee lift. Man of the 90s insulting the crowd. Well, there's another big powerful knee lift. And he goes over and insults the crowd again. Stan screaming Tony. Yeah, they want Tony out here. Laura Davenport not happy about that. Yelling to the crowd to shut up. Of course, that is not going to happen. Look at Davenport over there. She's screaming, breaking. And the man of the 90s just falls down with him. He's a big guy, too. He's not too tall, but he is a stocky fellow built up. Sets Trey Keller up and slams him into the turnbuckle. Oh, he's over choking him over there now is what he's doing. Yeah, using that rope. Referee Frank Morrell counting him back. Yeah, and look at that. Lord. Oh, she's just slapping Trey Keller. Oh, boy. After Keller has really been beaten up by this man of the 90s, the new one that Lauren Davenport has brought in here. Using the ropes again, and referee Frank Morrell gets him back, and Lauren Davenport immediately goes after him again, slapping his face. Body slam. The 90s, yeah, picked him up and body slam Trey Keller. Boy, this guy won't quit and he won't go for a cover. Just continuously, Dave, he's just full of energy, I guess you can say. He just falls down on Trey Keller, gets back up, falls down again with the series of elbows working on his arm. He's really giving Trey Keller a work over today. Whips Keller to the rolls. Oh! Well, good move there by man of the nine days, and he's got the three count. That's One, two, it three. right there. It's a victory for the new man of the nineties. He won't quit either. He's yeah. He went right back to work on him, and now Frank Morrell steps in and says, get out of here. Lauren Davenport, meanwhile, continues to work on Trey Keller. Now she leaves the ring. 
and the man of the 90s comes out of the ring too as he heads uh, back toward the dressing area. Boy, I tell you what, the new man of the 90s, trouble, like trouble in the USWA. Yeah. We'll be back. Well, you know there's big action coming up in the USWA. We got more of it for you right here today. Of course, Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. And, Corey, you got a lot of other action coming up, too. Yeah, we've got a lot of it coming up out of town, Dave. Biggersville, Mississippi starts Biggerville's uh, Thursday, April 23rd. Biggersville at the high school. Jeff Jarrett, Moondog, ladies tag match. Also, Keith Haynes, Woolworth Hastings. A lot of people lined up for Biggersville coming up Thursday night. Bell times at 8 o'clock. They're at the high school. Save a dollar on advance tickets for Biggersville, Mississippi. Saturday, next Saturday night, Jonesboro, Arkansas, Earl Bell Community Center. Spring Spectacular with uh, six big matches there. You see the Moon Dogs, Jeff Jarrett, Dirty White Boy, eight man ladies mixed tag match. All in Jonesboro. It's next Saturday night, Earl Bell Community Center. Friday, May 1st, back in Batesville, Mississippi, South Panola High School. The King will be there. Jeff Jarrett, Moon Dogs, all lined up for Batesville. May 8th, Friday, May 8th, Clarksdale, Mississippi, City Auditorium. Bell times at 8 o'clock. All of the USWA top stars lined up for Clarksdale uh, back at the Civic Auditorium. That's USWA Championship Wrestling, and that's it on tour, Dave. Got a special interview right now. I don't know how this is going to work out. Never <laughs> tried to do it before, but uh, let's see if, if I, my special interview subject is available right now that maybe we can talk to about a uh, special event coming up. <laughs> you got it. The Easter Bunny is here, and uh, with a basket in hand, and and Easter Bunny, I, I, I don't. We may need an interpreter here. Could I ask you just a couple of questions? Okay, I understand you're going to be at the Mid South Coliseum Monday night. That's a yes, definite yes. Going to have a basket with you, this basket right here, and you're going to give that to some lucky fan. All right, and, and uh, no purchase necessary. All right, so the fan and. And you're hanging around this extra day after Easter because you've got a match, I noticed on the card, against Nurse Cratchit. <laughs> Easter Bunny, last question. Can you win? Oh, yeah. 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 I think that's a yes. Easter Bunny can win against Nurse Cratchit. Don't forget about the basket. Some lucky fan will take it home. No purchase necessary. Monday night at the Coliseum. Easter Bunny, thank you. I know you got a busy weekend ahead. All right, back in just a moment. Tell me. In the ring right now, the opponent. With the full moon. For the moon dog. Down in the wild Louisiana. Hey, Brown. I want to ask Eddie Marlin in the back. Eddie, is this the best you can do? Brother, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel, and I'm insulted putting a bunch of trash in the ring with my dogs that looks like this, and I'm fixing to show you what happens when Richard Lee gets insulted. Richard Lee's insulted, he says. He sends the Boondogs in there, and they attack their opponents. A couple of young guys, Kerry Green and Wesley Jones. And I tell you what, you know, Richard, you can't, you can't make him happy. He was out here a couple of weeks ago. He, he was upset that nobody would wrestle his guys. Well, these young guys, I'm not sure how wise the decision it was, but they agreed to wrestle the Moondogs, and now Richard Lee is unhappy at the quality of his opponent. Yeah. Richard oh. Lee just never satisfied. Hey, they get a three cover in that day. They, they got, got the already. three, yeah. I, well, I, don't, I think it was uh, <laughs> not on purpose at all that they got a three count. They never do, but anyway, they get the win. Oh. Here comes Lee with some board. Here and it Richard, comes. That kind of stuff is not called quiet here. the chairman of the board. I just thought we'd have a little bit of fun. Right? Chairman of the board, he said. Yeah, I know what kind of board he's talking about. Yeah, man, those those that are in the ring right now that he just threw into the moon dog. Those big bones they carry around are not enough. Those big fists they use are not enough. Don't now, got to board. bring in the chairs, got to bring in the board, yeah. all the foreign objects, hand them into the moon dogs against these young kids after they've already beaten them. They got a three count, take the three count, take the victory and leave. No, that's not the moon dog style. Oh, and Richard Lee has that chair in there. Oh, he 
catches him with that chair. Working over young Kerry Green and Wesley Giants with those chairs. Slamming it on him. Richard Lee walking around ringside clapping about it. I hear everybody coming out here running their mouth, but I sure don't see nobody doing it. Yeah, Richard, why don't you take him out of here? I'll tell you what, Richard. You oh, they it. just knocked uh, referee Frank Morrell down. I tell you what, you complain about the level of competition, but there is competition around here, and in the days ahead, watch it, Dave. Yeah, watch you're going to see it. Oh, hey, goodness. look out! That he fell on top of that chair over there, thrown across the table onto the chair. And the moon dog is after him, slams him into the table. Meanwhile, Eddie Marlin is out here telling uh, Richard Lee, you have won your match. It is time to get him out of here. You know what? It, you know, a threatened him, uh, Richard Lee with suspension may not do the job right here. I don't know because, because Richard Lee knows and has said already, He's kind of got Eddie Marlin over a barrel that he can't uh, he can't really suspend him. Yeah, he can't do that. He's threatened a lawsuit. Richard has just gone. These guys are oh, look out! Here's some help. Oh yeah, they'll get him out of here. The King and Jeff Jarrett. Look at Lawler. He's got a broom. Working the moon dog over with it. You want competition, Richard Lee? You have found it right here. Lawler and Jarrett. They brought a broom with them to sweep the moon dogs out of here. Oh, oh, look out. They're ripping Lawler's shirt off. Jeff goes back in there as the action continues. Eddie Marlin is helping uh, a couple of the guys, uh, the, the two young guys who were scheduled against the moon dogs, having them out. Yeah, they yeah, get them out of the area. That's a good move. Yeah. Let Jared and Lawler handle it. They can oh. do it. Jeff caught him upside the head with that chair. Working moon dog Cujo over. Lawler. Over being worked over by Spike. Look out. This time it's Jeff who throws the moo dog into the table. Look out, Jeff. Richard, Richard Lee, Lee from behind. Yeah. I was down. That's oh, good. Yeah, Get hold of Richard Lee. He's got him. He nails him with a right hand. Good for Richard Lee. If he would get the moon dogs out of here, he wouldn't have had that. Jeff Jarrett runs the moon dog into the ring post. Jerry Lawler is after the other one. He picks up a chair, throws it at the other moon dog. Jeff Meanwhile, got Cujo over here. Working him over. He throws him back into the ring. Action everywhere, all over our studio. Eddie trying to get everything squared away. Eddie. Uh, Eddie is tied up with Richard Lee. I don't know here. if we can get him out of here, Dave. We, I don't, we may have to take a yeah. break. We're getting tied on time. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's take a break. Continues here. Let me tell you that the Moondogs and Richard Lee left. Richard Lee blew that whistle, and Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett were standing here. Lawler had a board in his hand, and the Moondogs are Decided gone. Decided to hightail it out of yeah. here. Yeah. We got rid of them, thank goodness. Great. Let's talk about the action coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Parking is free if you needed any incentive to be there to see this action coming up. Opening match of the night, Cat Garrett, promising young wrestler in the USWF. Yeah, looks good. He'll be going against Big Black Dog That's in the opening match opening of the night. Then it's going to be the Easter Bunny we had him here a few minutes ago. Says he can beat Nurse Cratchit. Well, we'll find out. Nurse well, Cratchit will be the opponent bit, there in this special added attraction. Don't forget about that uh, Easter basket, too. Dirty White Boy will be going, I beg your pardon, uh, the man of the 90s, the new man of the 90s that Lauren Davenport has, will be going against the old man of the 90s, Tony Falk. Now, Tony was out here, and he said, look, he's, he's, he, he apparently has fallen for Lauren Davenport, says he's in love with her, and he, he wants to convince her that he can wrestle, that he is the man of the 90s. Well, this is the way he's going to have to do it, by, by defeating the man of the 90s and convincing Lauren Davenport that he is, in fact, worthy to be called the man of the 90s. So Falk against the new man of the 90s. USWA ladies title will be on the line. Lauren Davenport, uh, oh, I beg your pardon, I, I'm, I'm getting out of order here. The, uh, the USWA uh, uh, ladies title match will be coming up. But first, I want to tell you about Dirty White Boy with Dirty White Girl in the corner going against Psycho. 
And again, Psycho doesn't look exactly like this picture here. Looks like he was under a mask at this particular time, but we saw him. Got that shaved head and, and has not that look in his eye, but one that's just as strange, let me tell you, as uh, he will uh, be going against Dirty White Boy in a single match. This one has the makings of a real, real wild match. Don't miss it. All right, then. I've been trying to tell you about the USWA ladies title match. Well, here it is right here. Dirty White Girls going to be challenging Lauren Davenport. These two don't like each other at all. Lauren no, Davenport, the current all. title holder, won it from Miss Texas. And the Dirty White Girl will be trying to get the, uh, get the title from Lauren Davenport come Monday night. Southern title on the line. Chain on the pole. Boy, this one, you know, it, it was an interesting match to begin with. Tom Pritchard said Brian Christopher is kind of a smart L.A. kid. It kind of is not the right word. He's a smart L.A. kid, and as Eddie Marlin said, he's a, he's a punk uh, with the way he was acting this morning. And uh, he, he brought the chain in there, the big logging chain, ended up knocking Eddie Marlin down. Eddie said, tell you what, I got a little bit of ego and a lot of pride left. Book me as the special referee in this match. And that's the way it's going to be. Chain on the pole. Anybody that gets it can use it legally. Tom Pritchard against Brian Christopher with Eddie Marlin as the special referee. And he says he'll have an equalizer with him, too. And that's not all. Six-man cage match coming up. Jared and Lawler with their partner, Charlie Trapper, the Moon Dog Hunter. They will be going against those Moon Dogs. Yeah. And Richard Lee. And they were holding their own very nicely right here, even without a partner. Can you imagine? with the added partner Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Here they come back right here again, Richard Lee, and I doubt Richard Lee's quite as happy as he was a little bit earlier after Mr. Lawler and Mr. Jarrett ran you guys out of here. I want you to listen to me, Dave Brown. I want everybody back in the back to listen to me. I want a close-up on this picture right here. Because I've got something that I'm going to show you. Right here, you see Jerry Lowe. Jerry Lowe is throwing fire in my face. Right over here, you got Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett's got a great big lamp on his face. And back here in the corner, you got Paul Neighbors, the referee. And he's laughing. As soon as I jumped in the ring to try and help my dog, Jerry Lawler threw a fire extinguisher at me. About the time I caught in, he threw fire in my face. That was strike number one, boys. Then we got it on film. Not once, but twice. We've got Frank Morrell and the Jeff Jarrett chairs during our matches to hit my dog with them. And then you guys want to come out here and accuse Richard Lee, accuse my dog of breaking the rules? It don't wash with me, fellas. And then you go someplace and find some goofball that you think you're going to come in here, supposed to be a trapper, and you're going to do something to my dog. The only thing you look like you've hunted, boy, is the supper table. And that's it. And you better keep one thing in mind. My dog, when they get in a cage, they're right at home, boys, because they're used to cages. Are you? I don't think so, Jerry Lawler. I don't think so, Jeff Jarrett. And you tell that big, fat, cheap Charlie Trapper that he don't know what he's getting himself into. Because squirrels and rabbits are meek and mild, buddy. But when you start dealing with moon dogs, you're dealing with death. And that's just exactly what's going to happen Monday night in Memphis. Put the cage out. I don't care. Bring them down. Bring your cans. Bring your boards. Bring whatever you want to bring, boys. I don't care. Because now, my dogs are mad. My dogs, and they don't know what they're going to take. And starting right now, boys, this kind of stuff is not going to happen to Richard Lee anymore. This kind of stuff is not going to happen to my dogs anymore. Because I'm letting them loose now, boys. I'm held them back. I've held him back long enough. You want a war? You've got a war, Jerry Lawler. You've got a war, Jeff Jarrett. And you fit off more than you can chew. So you better go find you another one and bring four of you. Because that's what it's going to take to beat two of my dogs. Monday night in Memphis. Walk the walk, boys. And take the ride on Moon Dog Mountain. Because you're going to slide down on your back. We'll be back after this.
venues for uh, Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett. They're going to have that partner with them uh, this, this week coming up. And uh, the reason they have a new partner this week is because of what happened last week with Eric Embry. Again, here are just some highlights of what happened last week at the Mid-South Coliseum. The Moondogs against Lawler, Jarrett, and Embry. Watch this. <laughs> One ball and 60 minutes in time. It's underway. Wild action. The Moon Dogs and Richard Lee. Yes, Laura, Jared, and Embry. You see Embry with that trash can. Sam's Moon Dog Cujo right to the head with it. Eric Embry in the ring. Wrapping that chain around his fist and comes down. with it again. Look at Eric Embry. Got that chest can over the head of the Moon Dog and takes a big play and slams that play with it. Lawler's working Moon Dog Cujo over. Jeff comes back behind the Moon Dog and he's holding the Moon Dog spike. Another chain out of nowhere. Boy, Embry is rolling tonight. Eric Embry pulled the chain out and rolled it out on the moon dog. Jeff comes in with a trash can, slams it on the dog. Jeff's holding that can. Embry's got the trash can. Richard Lee's in the corner. Well, action is still going on, even though all our Jared and Emory got pinned to them. Here comes a move. What in the world has he got in there? He's got some kind of stuff. That thing is steaming. What is it? Some kind of hot liquid, Jeff. He threw it in Emory's eyes over there. I don't know what it was in that thing. A cup full of some kind of stuff. Moon dog spot. The other moon dog came in here with that junk and threw it right in Embry's eyes and caught Embry with it. Oh, what in the world was it? The stuff was steaming. I don't know what it was. He caught Eric Embry right in the eyes with it. Some of the fans have got some cups of ice at ringside trying to cool Embry off. some medical help for Eric. Because that stuff got right in his eyes in there. That's going to be something else. Laura and Jared are still over and the fans are handing their cups over to try to cool Embry off from that hot liquid. I don't know what it was. It was some kind of red junk that Moondog Spot came in there with. He had a glove on the hand that he was holding it with because the stuff looked to be really smoking there and steaming. Lawler's running after Ember. He's got a, it's like a paper tie. Ember's screaming and yelling. He can't see anything. Boy, that's got to be a bad feeling, I tell you. 
Well, I tell you, every time I see that video, I still can't believe the level to which the Moon Dogs will stoop to, to win a match. Uh, just, just absolutely disgusting. By the way, Eric is obviously out, and uh, we don't know for sure when he's going to be back because we still don't know the full extent of uh, the damage to his eyes there. What about the action today, Corey? Yeah, we had a wild one. Psycho was in here. Nurse Cratchit said she uh, got one of her uh, customers, I guess you could say, from a hospital yeah. and brought him in today. Tony Falk was here. A mad Tony Falk got a victory. Dr. Tom Pritchard won by DQ. Brian Christopher came in here with those chains, and also he'll win this bout by disqualification. Man of the 90s, Lauren Davenport's man of the 90s. He was tough and looked good here today on Championship Wrestling. Our first look at him, and Richard Lee's Moondogs got a pin cover. They did get a one, two, three, and uh, that's what happened here today on Championship Wrestling. Boy, it sure did, and I tell you what, this new man of the 90s looks like exactly what La uh, Laura Davenport has been saying that she was looking for. Tony Falk was not getting the job done, but uh, she said, hey, I want uh, this new guy, and he was vicious oh, yes. in there, and, and you put the two of those oh, together God. with Lauren Davenport, I'm afraid we got some trouble in the coming weeks around the USWA. Brian Christopher also shoved down Eddie Marlin, hit him with a chain, and uh, cut Eddie Marlin Eddie open, open, so yeah. as a result, Eddie is going to have uh, the opportunity to referee a match down the road here, and he says he'll have an equalizer with him when that occurs. Be looking for all the action coming up. We'll be looking for you next week, same time, with more USWA Championship Wrestling action. Till then, for Corey Macklin, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station.